heterogeneous tumor immune microenvironments among differentially growing metastases in an ovarian cancer patient. I am Lou R., and I'm the person that this study is about. When I was first diagnosed, of course, it was a shock. During the six years of treatment with various different chemos, my cancer would shrink or return in different spots, and it just never seemed to make any sense. You have just heard from the patient of this study. Now let us explain how we investigate this case from a scientific point of view. When a primary tumor is growing in an organ, it is thought that individual or collections of cancer cells acquire the ability to invade, travel, and initiate new tumors elsewhere in the body. This process is called metastasis. It is as if a seed is blown off from a plant and travels to a different habitat where it germinates in the soil, the tumor microenvironment, given the right conditions. Prior studies have focused on properties of the seed and the soil, but in this work we add another element, the immune system. We symbolize the immune system as the weather, an external factor which is highly dynamic and can create a hot or cold environment that may also affect the seed's ability to germinate. We asked, how does the immune system influence tumor growth at different metastatic sites within one patient? To answer this question, we investigated a unique case of a patient diagnosed with stage 4 high-grade serous ovarian cancer. The patient underwent surgery to remove the primary tumor, followed by multiple lines of chemotherapy. Despite chemotherapy treatment for three and a half years, the patient relapsed and CT scans showed growing tumor deposits on distant organs. The treatment was stopped and the patient experienced an atypical course over the next two years. The disease biomarker CA125 decreased, and CT scans showed that some of the tumors were shrinking while others grew. The patient then underwent a second surgery that removed all of the tumors, which we then analyzed in detail. We investigated each of the tumors to determine if there were specific features that associated with their different shrinking and growing outcomes. On the molecular level, we didn't find any obvious mutations or predicted neoantigens to explain differences in growth status. However, in an unbiased gene expression analysis, CXCL9, a T-cell chemoattractant, and the HLA genes involved in antigen presentation were upregulated in the shrinking compared to the growing tumors. Using single-sample gene set enrichment analysis, we found that immune-related pathways such as TCR and interferon gamma signaling were upregulated in the shrinking tumors, but the immunosuppressive Wnt pathway was upregulated in the growing tumors. Immunohistofluorescence staining showed that shrinking tumors had evidence of T-cell infiltration, while the growing samples did not. TCR sequencing revealed that only the shrinking samples had evidence of oligoclonal expansion of T-cell subsets, indicative of active recognition of specific antigens. Finally, at the systemic level, we found that T-cells drawn from the blood of the patient nearly three years after the second surgery recognized synthesized peptides corresponding to the patient's predicted neoantigens in an intracellular cytokine staining assay. In summary, we found immune infiltration and activation in the microenvironment of the shrinking tumors, but not in the growing tumors. This case demonstrated that distinct tumor immune microenvironments can coexist within a single patient with ovarian cancer. Regressing tumors were associated with hot tumor immune microenvironments with T cell infiltration and activation, while progressing tumors were not. However, these observations are correlative and we cannot provide causative mechanistic insights beyond the findings in this N equals one patient case. If the observations described here are corroborated in larger patient cohorts, the implications are that heterogeneity at the tumor immune microenvironment level may pose a challenge for immunotherapy, but it also implies that given the right conditions, the immune system can at least recognize and perhaps control ovarian tumors. We leave you with the words of the patient. I created this art for the piece because it's very personal. It's a close-up of my eye, superimposed with water on a spider web, as well as the DNA, and the center of a flower that shows the fractal environment. My hope is that other people can learn to be less passive 
with their healing and to keep themselves open to the field of possibilities 